back on the Gianna Volpe Report, brought to you in part by Michael Evans, author of The Real Matrix, by Village Overhead Door in South Hold, and by Maximus Health and Fitness in Riverhead. We're back. We're back. We're back with George Giannaris from Hel- Hellenic. Hellenic. Hellenic Snack Bar. No, Hellenic Snack Bar, one of the best Greek places ever. And also one of the last ones on the North Fork, if not the last. Um, we've got Greek Bites in Manitouk. No, no, last as you're going oh, east yeah. on the North yeah. Fork. Oh, um, uh, yeah, no, yeah, unless there's some place in East Marion. Not that I know of yeah. besides uh, he would George's know. place. Yeah, which is, which is awesome. So I was there on April Fool's Day evening and did stand-up with Jenny Griffin. Um, they had a, they had like an open mic contest. So, mm-hmm. it, how much was the gift card for George? I think it was one hundred and forty dollars. Right. Imagine. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was an odd number because we're celebrating our fortieth year in business this year. Congratulations! I didn't know that. Thank you. That's awesome. Oh my gosh! So, so I had I'm having you on to talk about tales from the ferry too. Well, it's, yeah, it's Fairy Tales 2. Fairy uh, it's Tales. It's a sequel to the first book I published in 2008. This one's called Fairy Tales 2 When Hellenic Freezes Over. <laughs> Bruce is excited. He likes that. <laughs> I love it. I so, love it. <laughs> now, I'm guessing it has something to do with the the line of cars that come off the ferry. How, uh, how often is that? Uh, pretty much every hour in the summertime from like 7 or 8 a.m. till about 9 or 10 o'clock at night, depending on the weekday or weekend. And a lot of that, uh, yeah, the restaurant kind of uh, would have ended in Orient. Uh, the traffic pattern would have ended in Orient had it not been for the ferry. So we get a lot of business because of people who use that ferry. So a lot of things have transpired <clears throat> by virtue of the fact that I'm on the one and only road that leads to uh, Connecticut. Yeah. On the North Fork. Yeah. And to civilization from the ferry. <laughs> so so, so this is about uh, the different things that have happened. Uh, what are, I guess it, it's got to be a double-edged sword, right? Uh, yeah. Um, the, the first book was, was kind of like, uh, it was actually the first book I published in 2008 was a, was a memoir that was never really meant to be published. I was just jotting down my stories and things that I thought may go uh, by the wayside had they never been written down. Right. And um, my friend really pushed me into publishing. And it was a tremendous success. So the second book was a little bit more calculated. It took about eight years to write. And wow. uh, the, the, the first book was a recollection of all the things that had happened in the past, while the, the second book is, is a short story it's about things that actually were going on since I published Fairy Tales 1. So it's more um, comical, introspective stories, um, philosophical insights, recipes, photographs. I, I listened to people who read Fairy Tales 1, and they, a lot of people wanted uh, some, some recipes and pictures, so that I, I put them in the book as well. Oh, man. I wish, you know, I should have I should have pitched this story to the Express, because I think that would have been great for Summer Harvest. But we can always do, we can do it for something in the fall, since it's your four, it's, it remains your 40th anniversary. That's that's like that's yeah. quite an achievement. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to remain our. This is going to be our well, our actual 40th anniversary. The actual date is Fourth of July, and uh, this year we're commemorate, commem- commemorating it with uh, with a live Greek music on the lawn. Nice. So it's a free event. Oh, I'll be there. Be I, great. I guess that's what I'm doing Fourth of July. So now, how do you? <clears throat> Pardon me, but it's got to be very seasonal. So now, what do you do? I would guess it's got to be tough, like in January, February, March. Well, it's tough anywhere. But particularly for you, because you know how many people go to Connecticut in January, February, and March. Yeah, but the the locals. Lo- I mean, everyone loves Lenox. I understand that, but how do you deal with the slack periods? Yeah. Well, we hope for good weather in the summer to compensate for for, you know, you know, lean business in the winter. We do close the, the Monday after Thanksgiving, and we reopen end of January. And shockingly, like February and January are really good months for us. I think prob- probably because most of the people around us are closed. Yeah. Mm. Um, 
the, the, I would say the, the worst month for us business-wise would probably be like end of March, beginning of April when tax season rolls around. Huh, okay. And, and end, of, end, of, like end of October to Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is one of our busiest weekends, I guess, because all the college kids are coming back in town. Mm-hmm. So we, we do okay. It's, it's, it's a little difficult. I think everyone would say the same thing. On the, on the North Fork, it's feast and famine. You know, you just hope that you right. make up for, for the, the winter by doing a lot of volume in the summer. Right. Hmm. I, um, how are you feeling about this summer so far? We got Memorial Day weekend coming up. Um, I'm a little nervous about this summer because we've we've gotten an explosion of business lately on the weekends, and it, it, it just it's it's like full force for for Saturday night and Sunday. It's almost been like Fourth of July. A couple of weeks ago, we were full to capacity. Wow. We have 250 seats, so it was really exceptional to see that happen on the off season. Right. Um, we're getting a lot of people uh, who have responded to my, the 40 events that I'm doing for for my 40th year, and uh, and the, and just the publicity with fairy tales is kind of you know getting everyone's attention to the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, we're I can't I can't believe how many reservations we have for catering and, and wedding parties and, uh, and small parties, and it, it's just been hopefully it's going to be really really good. Oh my gosh! So tell me, like, I, I want to hear, like, what what's one of your favorite fairy tales, or like, you know, uh, maybe not a favorite, but tell me one. Um, well, let's see. One of the chapters. Let me think for a second. One of the chapters that I really like uh, the best um, is called "Accidental Recipes." Um, it, it's a bunch of menu items that evolved by accident. And uh, one of them was involved my wife in in, uh, in our home where uh, she accidentally reached into the refrigerator for um, a box of organic chicken broth and instead grabbed the box of organic uh, chai latte. <laughs> so she had spent the whole day preparing this um, this uh, sautéed vegetable and chicken dish, and, and instead of putting in chicken stock, she put in organ chai tea. Wow. And... And then she freaked out and called me to come fix it. And it turned into one of the most spectacular Thai-style Asian dishes I've ever made in my life. And uh, But the nuances in, in the chapter are, are really funny because uh, just the way she freaked out and, uh, and just how well it turned out. We, we actually make this dish. I haven't served this particular one in the restaurant, but we actually make this dish on regular occasions for friends. And it, most people agree that it's like the best Asian dish they've ever had in their wow. life. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, what necessity of mother invention. That, that's so cool. Like, I mean, some of the greatest things that have been invented have have been uh, by accident. Hello? So another another thing that uh, one of the chapters that's uh, dear to my heart um, is, is not a comical one. It's called Angie, A-N-G-I, mm-hmm. and it's about... Um, you know, my father has been, an, my parents have been an integral part of the business for, for, for decades, and um, my father's, you know, the hardest working man I've ever met in my life, and he's always been like a pillar, and he still is a pillar in my life. He's 80, he will be 80 next year, and he still works in the restaurant, um, but at one point, he his, his health was a little questionable. Uh, he had to go in for an angiogram, and uh, it was just a, a real eye-opener that one day I may be completely responsible for the restaurant and at the time sooner than I wanted to and it was like a, a an emotional spiritual tormenting time for me right. uh, just to see what the outcome would be uh, after he went in for his tests and uh, that that just happens to be a really um, really emotional and, and uh, spiritual chapter for me I really like that one as well so where can people pick this book up um, in a short while, it isn't in print just yet. Uh, it will be available on Amazon and, and at the restaurant. Um, uh, as, as it gets released, I do get a lot of requests from local bookstores to carry it. So it will probably be in Greenport and Sag Harbor, um, but primarily the restaurant and Amazon. And it'll be when, uh, when will a, that be? a digital book as well. When 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 is the release? Well, I was just on the on the phone with my publishing company, and uh, we're having a, a release party at the restaurant on June 11th from two to five. Okay. 
but it may possibly be pushed back to the 18th, depending on uh, if I can get copies in hand, because there's some glitches with the cover right now. Uh-oh. But most likely it'll be um, on, on the 11th from 2 to 5. You can check the website, the Hellenic Facebook page, for, uh, for more details. Thank you so much for coming on, George. And anyone who is on the North Fork tonight from 7 to 11 at Four Doors Down, there's going to be an open mic night uh, raising money for brain tumor awareness. Um, And Will will be back next week. An overhead door serves a purpose, and it should be as beautiful as the rest of your home or building. For more than 30 years, Village Overhead Doors has been creating and installing beautiful garage doors for contractors and homeowners on the North and South Forks. They also install automatic garage door openers that open with the click of a remote, so there's no getting out of the car in bad weather. For a wide range of styles from lifetime steel doors to custom-made wood doors and for all your garage door needs, please call 765-4963 today and find out how your garage door can be a beautiful focal point of your home or building's exterior. Village Overhead Doors of South Oak, 765-4963. Make the call and let them add beauty and value to your home or business. Maximus Health and Fitness of Riverhead is 25,000 square feet of everything you need to create a new you. Maximus Health and Fitness, 130 East Main Street, has state-of-the-art exercise equipment, free weights, professional personal trainers, and private workout areas. They're next to the Suffolk Theater in the heart of historic downtown Riverhead. Use their child facilities, tanning stations, a hair salon, and smoothie bar with your membership at Maximus. Your membership also includes a full calendar of fitness classes like cross training, weight training, boot camp, Zumba, spin, yoga, Pilates, and a lot more. Start a new, healthier lifestyle that you can stick with all year long. Join Maximus Health and Fitness, 130 East Main Street in Riverhead. Call 369-6293. 369-6293. Check their website at MaximusRiverhead.com or come on in to Maximus Fitness today. Maximus Health and Fitness, being healthy and getting in shape has never been easier. <laughs> 